I'm Jade Weinhold. I'm from Woodstock, Cape Town, and I'm 32 years old. Um, I first discovered I had breast cancer when I was 27 years old. Um, I'm quite a diligent individual, so I sort of knew that something was wrong with me, and I did a self-examination at home, and I found a pea-sized, what I found irregular in the breast tissue. Um, I left it for two weeks, being diligent, waited to see if it was hormonal or anything like that. And then I did it again, um, did another breast examination, it was still there, in fact it was harder. Um, then disclosed it to my husband first, uh, and as husbands do, stress um, with their wives, go and check this out, go and find what it is, um, and he had booked my appointment which I then put off for two months <laughs> but I eventually found myself at a, um, a GP, a female GP and she done uh, a breast examination and she sent me to the breast clinic at Krutsky Hospital and um, they did the biopsy there and that's when they discovered that it was cancer. So I had sort of known, sort of knew rather that I wasn't well um, and I think that I was fighting with myself, just my own intuition saying, not well, I won't even for morning signs, if we share that as women. Um, and I sort of knew in the back of my mind that this is not going to be good news. I didn't know it was going to be cancer, but I knew it was going to be bad news. Um, so the weeks that I was putting it off, I was sort of preparing myself for whatever it is that I was going to have to face a few months down the line. Um, and the day that it happened, we, uh, just like my GP, they were like, you're so young, you don't have a history of cancer, um, it's probably like a cyst or something, like there wasn't cancer on the mind for this pea-sized thing in my breast. Um, so when they did the biopsy on the day, they couldn't disclose this information to me because Everyone's like, it's probably nothing. So they had to let me go home, wait a day, call me back, and then um, give me my diagnosis. So um, I remember receiving the news and feeling like a, like a, just like a sucker punched me. Like I knew it was going to be bad news, but then, and then you deal with cancer, then it's cancer. Um, so it was very difficult on the day. Um, I just, I felt, an overwhelming anxiety and fear because I was facing this terrible thing that has taken so many cancer. That's what I was feeling on the day. So after I received the news, um, I shared it with my husband, who I thank God for. Thank God for my husband. Thank God for pushing me to go see the doctor, etc. I don't think I'd be alive today if it wasn't for his. Um, I shared the news with him and he has parents that has fought cancer so he comes from a different realm of understanding like this is you can fight this how far is it those are the questions that he, he was asking He's a, he, he is a research analyst type of individual so he, straight, he dove straight into research I was sulky um, and <laughs> I was completely down and he totally lifted me up, he's like, there, there is a way out of this, um, it is not a death sentence, there is an action plan, I'm sure they're going to pull you back and they're going to have a whole treatment plan ready for you and he started doing research about how this, the recovery rates, how if it comes back, etc. So he had all this information that he then educated me on and through that education um, I felt empowered. So by my next doctor's appointment, I was ready. I was like, okay, got the boots, I got the gear on, got my shield, I got everything going um, because I understood that this is, some, it's a battle. However, I have every, every tool to win. So um, I was like, okay, I'm gonna give this my best shot. I'm gonna do everything. Um, it was a radical treatment plan. It was um, um, hormone therapy, um, chemotherapy, radiation, um, double mastectomy, it was all like super radical because the uh, cancer that I had was a um, grade 3 um, uh, hormonal sensitive cancer um, and I think due to my very stressful job and 
I started a business and I had two small children at home, one in, one in a bit. <laughs> um, it was very stressful and I think that that just called my, my hormones to surge and therefore accelerate this cancer in my body. Um, so we got down, we radically changed my diet, started exercising, like really getting into the mind state, um, a war, a battle mind state and I think that that's why we're referred to as cancer warriors because we literally are on a battlefield for our life. Anyone that's struggling with the disease right now or struggling with, with um, getting the energy and the zest back to fight it, it's literally that. Like, take a moment and gather what you're fighting for. I think that that's what makes us so unique. Um, the feminine energy so unique is the moment that we are are activated to a reason beyond ourselves or in ourselves that we go, we go. So anyone that's actually fighting um, breast cancer at the moment, right? I know that you are capable um, through my own experience. So. Yes, that's right. You are so obviously capable beyond your understanding and that this is just in sort of bump in the road right now and you're going to look back and you're going to see this in retrospect and you're going to go oh my gosh i was capable of doing that um and i i just i just want to encourage all women or women that's facing any kind of tribulation or trial that's that feels beyond them is that they are so capable you have so much we have such a deep well um, it's only our own um, stopping ourselves our own. We, we don't draw from ourselves to that point like we stop drawing um, and it's, it's strange it's like the runner's mind um, it's, it's very similar so um, women that are fighting cancer at the moment just say that they are so capable of being is in a bump and you may look back retrospectively and say I can't do that. So I just want you to be encouraged and um, know that they are positive in this.